So what is the number one question that I've ever seen about Jeep YJs? Should I remove the track bars? Well, I'm here to answer that. What's going on guys, this is Dan with Flawed Off-Road. While it is true, this track bar topic is kind of like beating a dead horse. I'm here to clear some things up because there is a lot of false information out there. So for some reason, this topic seems to be really controversial. So I'm gonna do my best to give you the pros and cons so you can make an informed decision yourself about whether you're gonna remove yours. So I'm not here to try to tell you to remove your track bars. That's gonna be your choice. And remember, there's always a give and take when it comes to modifying any vehicle, really. So before you take them off, it's important to know what they even do. So let's start explaining what a track bar or panhard bar is, what it does, and why Jeep or AMC decided to put them on a YJ in the first place. So a track bar is a bar that connects axle to the frame of the vehicle, and its job is to keep the axle centered laterally underneath the Jeep. And this makes a lot of sense on a coil sprung Jeep like a Jeep TJ, it has the track bar to locate it left to right, and then it has control arms that keep it from moving forward and back to locate the axle. Because the coil spring can easily flex in any directions. So without those, your axle would just flop around oh, like a dead fish. So this is exactly why a coil spring Jeep needs a track bar, because otherwise it would just be all over the place. So when the track bar moves up and down, it is forced to follow an arc. And this connection with my thumb right here is where it's hooked to the axle. So if your axle droops out, it's not only going down, but it's moving that way too. It's very slight, but it does move side to side. So on a coil spring Jeep, it doesn't really bind up because of the way the coil spring can freely bend in any direction. So everything works very fluidly and without any issues. Now, on a Jeep YJ, the leaf springs already do this job of centering the axle by having two connections to the frame one on each side and the axle in the middle, and the leaf springs really only move up and down for the most part. Now don't get me wrong, there can be a minor deflection to either side, especially under load because leaf springs have bushings that are designed to move a little bit, and there can be a slight deflection, but for the most part, your axle is gonna stay put when you got leaf springs, and it's not gonna walk out from under your Jeep, and if it does, you've got bigger problems. Anyway, moving forward, let's get down to the pros and cons of removing your track bars from your YJ. And I say, let's start with the pros. All right, so pro number one, you will gain more flex or suspension travel. Like I said before, the track bars must move on an arc when your axle moves up and down. And since leaf springs don't easily move laterally to the side, it creates a major source of binding. Your leaf springs will keep the axle centered under the frame on their own, which actually fights against that arc movement that I was talking about. So the result of removing that track bar is you also remove that binding, which frees up your suspension to get the full travel potential. So number two, you will get a much softer ride quality out of your Jeep. For the same reason that I mentioned above, once you remove that binding force, not only do you get your full travel potential, but it also like softens things up because they're not fighting against each other when it moves up and down, when you hit bumps, when you hit potholes, or when you're off-road, things like that. So that in turn actually creates a lot softer ride. That's all assuming that you don't have like super stiff truck shocks on there or like really really seized up bushings or stiff leaf springs or anything like that but just in general it's gonna be a softer ride pro number three this one might sound like a con but just bear with me bear with me here so your front track bar can actually cause you to have bump steer really anything with a solid front axle but I'm mostly referring to a YJ's with a lift kit and those like relocation brackets for the track bar and what that does is it kind of changes the geometry of the track bar and you also have your steering drag link and it depends if you're using the stock steering or not and lots of other factors but if those two angles don't match and the links of those two don't match when you cycle your suspension it can cause all kinds of problems and bump steer crappy handling and that kind of stuff so removing your track bar if you are this person that can save you a whole lot of headache and so if you have a lift kit and you have that track bar bracket and your steering sucks especially when you hit bumps try taking it off there and i bet you it goes away all right pro number four less crap to break on your jeep everybody loves less crap to break you know uncomplicate things that when it's not needed and you have it on there and then if it starts wearing out the bushings or things like that it's actually can cause you more problems than it can help you so that's just something to consider plus the weight savings so hey if this video is helping you guys out hit that like button so that more people can see this video and consider subscribing if you want to see more about this jeep and really all kinds of jeep yj content
So let's move on to the cons. I personally had none of these, so most of these that you're gonna hear are ones that I've heard from other people's arguments or other people saying, oh, well, I did it and I had this go wrong. Con number one, some people will report that their handling feels loose, especially if they have the stock leaf springs. The stock springs are flat, they're old, and they're soft, kind of like me. So removing that limiting factor can make some people feel like their Jeep is a little bit squirrely on the highway or that they have a little bit of body roll and curves especially if they also removed their sway bars, but that's a whole nother discussion. Con number two, you will probably fail your state inspection if you live in a communist state that does the full inspections like Pennsylvania and some other ones because they're gonna see that it's missing. So I've heard stories of people cutting off the bracket on the axle and cutting off the bracket on the frame and then they don't really see that empty bracket and don't realize that it's missing and thus they don't fail you. Your mileage may vary, kind of depends on where you go to get your inspection. I'm not trying to tell you how to skirt it, I'm just telling you what I've read about before. Con number three, possible insurance issues if something happens, if you get in an accident or something like that. Insurance companies really love to place the blame where it doesn't belong, if that means they can get out of paying something out, so they might see that, hey, you've modified your suspension, so it's your this accident's your fault. And this can go really with any mod that you do. If you, I mean, look at my Jeep, it's got, Ford axles, Wagoneer springs, welded steering. So you gotta take that into consideration. That doesn't mean, oh no, I'm doomed. It just means think about it. If you're gonna be out daily driving something that you've modified the hell out of, that something could happen. Personally, I've never heard of this happening, but I've heard stories of people claiming it happened. So, you know, who knows? So what happened when I removed my track bars? I bought my Jeep about nine years ago and it was bone stock and I drove it for probably six months before I heard about removing your track bars. So I pulled them off of there and all I can say is wow, it like doubled my suspension travel. It went from feeling like a lumber truck to actually riding like a car. And honestly, it was like the best thing since sliced bacon. So a few years after that, I ended up buying a BDS three and a half inch lift kit. And so I did that and I left the track bars off again. And actually the ride kind of firmed up because lift springs are a lot stiffer than the stock factory springs that come on the Jeep. And so honestly, it was still like I had my full suspension travel and actually my limit was my shocks. But anyway, if you fast forward to now, 2021, there's like nothing Jeep left under this Jeep. It's Ford F-250 axles and Wagoneer Springs. It's spring over. It's, it's completely custom, but I still have no track bars and it still rides like a dream. Okay, so hopefully you learned something here and you've got the info you need to make the decision on removing your track bars or not. So while I got your attention, check out some of my partners and you can save 10% on some awesome welding equipment from Yes Welder. Got some great coffee from Trail Rated Coffee. They donate a lot of money to Leave No Trace and stuff like that to help keep trails open. It's a great cause and the coffee's awesome. So use that code or my Yes Welder code and helps me out a little bit too. So anyway, if you liked this video, hit that thumbs up and check out this video right here. Dan out.